Welcome back, everybody. Let me get the tripod correct here. I'm the host of the greatest webcast on the internet on Facebook. This is Rock Talk Live, and I'm really excited to be uh, next to Stephen Cardulo here today. Yeah. Yeah. Great to be here. Yeah. Exactly. Excited. We're sitting here at Coors Field, and you know, in the past, these broadcasts have been kind of crazy, weird questions. Uh, but I wanted to take this opportunity to do more of a get to know you kind of feature with Steven. He obviously has a has a unique story and here we are at a big league ballpark with an opportunity to connect with you guys. So if you've uh, if you're tuning in today for the first time, we need your questions. If you want to send some love and encouragement, say what's up to Steven, feel free to do so on uh, on your phones and devices as well. Uh, but we're just going to get started. Uh, so. You grew up in South Florida. Yes. It's obviously a hotbed for, for baseball, but sports in general. So just talk about when you were a kid growing up playing baseball and what the Little League experience was like. Uh, I started playing baseball around four years old and, you know, in the backyard of my dad. and Then I went to Little League. Uh, but growing up, I played you know, multiple sports, ice hockey, soccer, baseball. And uh, I mean, it was just a blast. And just in Florida, you can play sports year-round. Definitely. A little bit of everything. Just so you can see here, we got some love from Raymond Estrada Jr. Congratulations. Nice hit last night. Uh, so this is a great opportunity for you guys to connect. Keep sending that love. Uh, so you played every sport growing up. Obviously, you gravitated toward baseball, and you were at a really good high school at St. Thomas Aquinas. What was your experience like there, kind of taking the next step of going from Little League and then becoming a more higher-level player at the high school level? Uh, going to St. Thomas, you know, that was an elite high, high school. I played football and baseball. A lot of my teammates are in NFL right now. Uh, just a couple, Marcus Gilbert, Sam Young, Major Wright, Geno Atkins. So I had a stacked team, uh, my you know my senior year in high school for football, and then uh, I was lucky enough to uh, walk on the fourth state. And that was so Rick Franco's asking what what uh, what college you went to. So, all right, so you walk into Florida State. Uh, you you came from a huge high school program, so maybe not as recruited as highly as you could have been if you were at a stand out on a different program. So, yeah. uh, Florida State's obviously a great program. Mm -hmm. uh, what made you want to continue to play baseball there to keep the dream alive and uh, and just kind of keep on going. You know, I, I always wanted to, you know, go to go to school in Florida. Uh, Florida State has so much tradition, and uh, you know, if I had to go to a school where I wasn't going to play baseball, it would have been Florida State. And luckily enough, they had a camp a month before you know school started, and I went to it with my dad, and uh, you know, I made the team. And uh, but just what a tremendous honor just to play for the Garden Gold. Absolutely. Uh, did you play with any big leaguers there? Was that Buster Posey? Years yeah, I played with Buster guys? two years. Tyler Holtz. Devin Travis, Sean Gilmartin, um, and uh, Rafa Lopez is a big leaguer, uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure there's one or two other guys I've called up, but obviously Posey is the biggest name, and sure. Devin Travis. Have you heard from any of those guys in the last couple days? Oh, yeah. you kept in touch with? Yes, I've got a lot of love from them, text messages, you know, congratulations. We all keep in touch, uh, so it's great. Definitely. Uh, I had a question from Richard Hoover. We'll skip ahead a little bit in your timeline. Uh, so you're number 65. Nice. Uh, obviously, that was a number that we had available, and in most cases, that's the that's the case. But there were some other non-high numbers for a first baseman. So, what, what, why did you pick uh, 65 as your as your jersey number with the Rockies? I, I was just given the number. I mean, obviously, um, getting called up late on the road. I'm sure you know that's what that's what they had there. So, I mean, I'm more than happy to wear number 65. So. <laughs> and blessed to wear this uniform. Absolutely, whatever jersey they gave you. Yeah, exactly. One of the things I just picked up on that you kept talking about is your, your dad was a part of it, uh, going to that tryout camp. Just talk about your family and how they've been with you along this journey and what they mean to you. Uh, they mean the world to me. They've been so supportive throughout you know, my whole career, just go from Little League to high school to, to even now. Um, you know, college, you go to my games along with my grandparents. My grandparents, too, are so supportive. Um, and this, you know, obviously being in the minors for so long, you, know, you, need, you need that support system to really keep going. For sure. And they were able to experience it. They, they were in uh, D.C.? Yeah, they, they came up to see my debut. Uh, what, you know, it was a great special feeling for them, special feeling for the whole family. Absolutely. Okay, so you, you really emerged at Florida State, good team. You continued to develop, and you get drafted by the Diamondbacks. A late, a late draft pick, 24th round. Um, you played played a year there. Just talk about quickly what what it was like to see your name on that draft board and know that you were going to play professional ball. So each step along the way, you you accomplished that dream, you accomplished the goal of going to the next level. What was it like getting drafted and going into professional ball for the first time? It's a great feeling. You, know, you work hard and you, you hope to see your name on that draft board. And uh, you know, I was very fortunate to get drafted and start my professional career. For sure. 
so it was short-lived with the Diamondbacks uh, for whatever reason. You know, that's the way baseball works. It's a tough game. A lot of good players out there. And after a season of two, I believe it was it was time to move on and continue the dream in a different way. Uh, you went for the London Rippers and Road Warriors. Was it which one was it at the time? Was it the Road it, Warriors? It was the London Rippers, okay. and then they folded halfway through the year, and then I got traded to a, a different team, uh, Florence Freedom, in the same league. And then that offseason, I got traded to uh, Can -Am, Can -Am, the Can-Am League with the Rock and Bowlers, where I've been the past uh, three seasons. Yeah, and it seems like they have a great fan base. We've actually been in contact oh, yeah. with the people there. And it seems like a, if you're if you're doing independent ball, it seems to me like that's a great organization to be a part of. Absolutely. absolutely. First class organization, um, huge fan base, you know, probably because it's a lot cheaper to go to those games rather than the Yankees games. So yep. the fan base was huge. Um, the support and text I've gotten from everybody there, you know, has been humbling. Um, and I also found out, so they delayed the game on my for my debut, for my first at bat. Really? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. And they played on the big screen. So you're part of that family. Yeah. yeah. We, we were actually in contact with them today. We sent them the gif of your hit, all the, the clips and everything. So nice. uh, it's really cool you've been able to keep in touch with them oh, and yeah. be a part of that family. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the reality is, though, most people, when they're in independent ball, it's like a year or two, and you sort of, you know, think, you know, I have a finance degree from Florida State. Is, is this going to work out? Do I want to keep the dream alive? Uh, what What were your thoughts during those times when you weren't sure if you wanted to keep doing it, or, or did that ever cross your mind at all? Um, you know, you really, you really try not to think about it. You know, you just try to take it day by day and just hope that, you know, if you can have a good season and you know, be, you know, have the opportunity to, you know, get seen by the right right club at the right time that maybe things can work out and uh, fortunate enough you know that's what happened with that's me. exactly what happened yeah so credit to the rocky scouting department you you had some good seasons in uh with rock and boulders uh continued to develop as you know as as you've gone on in your career and you go straight to triple a out of spring training uh how did it, how exactly did it happen with the rockies contacting you saying we want you to be a part of our organization going to spring training what was that like kind of being back in affiliated ball and going to salt river field which is an amazing complex uh, Mr. Wilson, he gave me a call in January and told me that you know the Rockies were going to give me, uh, we're going to bring me into spring training, give me an invitation, and uh, you know, and that's all that's all I was ever asking for. And I was just have an opportunity to spring training, trying to earn earn a, uh, earn a job at whatever level it was. So going into spring training, I was just trying to make anything possible, whether it was low A, high A, double A. I mean, fortunate enough, it was, I, I made the Triple A team. Absolutely. We have a great setup in Albuquerque. Just talk about that experience, the, the facilities there, the, the fans, the setup there. I mean, in, in minor leagues, that's as big leagues as it gets. Just talk about what that was like when you were there for a few months. For sure, first class all the way. Um, fan base was tremendous, so supportive, into every game, great turnouts. Uh, my manager, G. Hill, hitting coach T-Bone, pitching coach uh, D. Scott. Just a tremendous, tremendous coaching staff. It is so knowledgeable about the game and it helped me so much my career. My teammates there, uh, great character, tremendous people. You know, all the love they gave me when I got called up. Everyone was so happy for me. That was such a humbling feeling. And, you know, it's so special to me. But playing there definitely helped me. You know, get ready for the big leagues. Absolutely. So you mentioned G. Hale and T. Bone. Those guys, great people. Some of my favorite people. Talk about that exact moment. Was it? Were you called into the office when they told you to get? that you were going to the big leagues or what was that moment like when they told you that that you were going to be a big leaguer so uh i get to the field pretty early um g hill song was like hey dulo um you're off today be ready to pinch it you know we're in triple a we're in a playoff hunt and they were playing el we we're playing el paso at the time and they're in first place so sixth inning comes around i'm ready to hit nothing happens ninth inning comes around I'm ready to hit, nothing happens. Extra innings. I'm like, gee, I'm ready to hit. Um, and he's like, oh, you're off today. So the game's over. Unfortunately, we lose. I'm in the cage picking up all the balls that I hit, trying to get ready. And then he's like, Dulo, hurry up. We got a team meeting in the gym. And uh, sure enough, the whole team was in there. And then he just made the announcement that, uh, you know, the teammates going to the big leagues and everyone was just jumping on me. It was just, it was a great feeling. That's awesome. That's what it's all about. I mean, that's got to be one of the coolest things as as a manager at the AAA level, being able to tell people like you that you're that you're going to be a big leader. Yeah, I mean, I owe all my success to G Hill. You know, he's helped me so much just with you know how, just with the game, knowledge of the game. He's so he has such a great baseball mind, and just, he's really helped me so much.
he's been around forever. He yeah. used to kill the Rockies as a member of the Giants. So. <laughs> I don't know if he ever told you that. I did. But yeah, so all right, so that's a great call-up story. You finally, uh, you finally arrive. Was it? It was DC you went to, right? Mm -hmm. all right so you, you go straight to DC. Um, what were your first impressions of, of being in a, a big league ballpark, wearing a big league uniform, and just having that moment kind of sink in for the first time? Uh, I didn't. Really, I really tried. Didn't let it sink in just because I really trying to focus on. Uh, you started ready, that night too. Yeah, yeah. trying to prepare <laughs> for the, the game. Um, you know, maybe, um, you know, every day I try to take it day by day and stay in the present and just try to do what I can to help the team win. You know, and uh, yeah. You've done that ever since. Yeah, solid, solid debut. Had a heck of a pinch hit at bat the next game, uh, or it might have been the, the the extra innings game. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a, extra innings. I think you took him deep. I don't remember exactly what happened. Yeah. But I remember thinking, man, that was really good at bat. And then last night you get your first major league hit. Uh, what was it like standing on first base, seeing all your teammates here in the dugout cheering for you, seeing all the fans standing ovation? What was that moment like? Such a hum humbling feeling just to have the fan base just give me that same ovation and all my teammates, you know, just you know, or this team full of superstars and to see them just acknowledge the fact, you know, for my first Billy really hit when Parra had his thousand hit that same day, <laughs> you yep. know, it was just a, such a special feeling. I can't thank, thank everyone enough. Awesome. So that brings us to last night. Uh, what a ride it's been. Such an amazing, incredible story. Uh, for everybody listening, honestly, work hard, do what you can do, and, and you never know what's possible. Uh, I have a couple funny, quick questions before okay. we leave. Okay. Um, Tony Walter said that one of the biggest things that he loved about the big leagues, because he had just been in double A and then he's a big yeah. leaguer, was the food. Uh, <laughs> talk about the food here in the big leagues, the setup compared to what it's like in the minors. I mean, it's... It's I mean anything you think of you're gonna get uh, you know nutrition wise they have everything laid out for you uh, snacks drinks shakes uh, catering stations whatever you want you got so I mean it's 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 like going to a buffet <laughs> do your work focus on yeah, playing yeah, ball and yeah. it's all there for you yeah uh, I, I always want to know too what is it like that first time on the team flight you know you used to early morning flights oh, yeah. out of small towns or used to sitting on you know small seats our, our planes a little bit different what was that yeah. like that experience? Oh, man, that, that plane is, <laughs> is beautiful so, um, so luxurious um, I mean yeah just uh, trying to find the right seat to sit into I didn't want to you know, yeah. steal a veteran seat. same way yeah so <laughs> uh, but yeah just sitting there and just uh, first first class all the way perfect uh, I have one more question. I want, to, want you to just give some advice to kids. But but before that, do you ever get Paul Goldschmidt? Has anybody ever told you to look like Goldie? Uh, <laughs> no, I haven't got that. We saw that all over Twitter last night. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys think this looks like Goldschmidt. Hopefully, uh, hopefully um, Stephen will continue to be, uh, uh, you know, maybe a better player than Goldie someday. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> he sure is a good one. Anyway. It's been awesome catching up with you. I think uh, your story, as I said, is pretty inspirational. So why don't you just give a sign off? If you know, if, if there's any kids watching or, or anybody who needs a, a pick me up today, just quick sign off about what it's like and um, you know, just okay, yeah, floor uh, is yours. So you know, the biggest thing I say, you know, everyone has you know their path to whatever. You know, my path to the big leagues was proving myself over and over and over and over again. You know, and just continue to get better every day. And, you know, obviously you just got to keep that faith, keep working hard, and then hopefully, you know, just hope for the best. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm thankful to be here. You know, I think, you know, I just can't thank the Rockies enough for the opportunity they've given me. Um, God bless, guys. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Good stuff, man. Thanks. That's a starting point. Going to keep on going. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.